Hi everybody. The purpose of this video is to go over section two of chapter five, and we are going to introduce a very specific type of discrete distribution called the binomial distribution. However, before we can talk about the binomial distribution, we are going to need to talk about this idea of a random variable. Once you've done that, we can tie this to an idea of a binomial random variable, which is a random variable that has a binomial distribution. And we will use that to calculate probabilities. And of course, I will show you how to use technology, namely your calculator, to do that. So let's start off with random variables. A random variable is a collection of numeric values that are determined by the outcome of an experiment. An obvious experiment might be a coin toss, where you have where the outcomes are heads and tails. A random variable, a random variable would map heads to one and tails to zero. So we take an outcome of any experiment and we assign a number to it. Sometimes the numbering is trivial, like it might be for the roll of a die. Other times it may not nearly be as straightforward. We do have a notation for random variables. Namely, the random variable will always be noted by an uppercase letter, like uppercase X. Now, as I mentioned before, a random variable can take on certain different values. Those specific values will be noted in general by either that value or the lowercase number X. And let's apply this to an example. Suppose that you were a member of Limestone's famous baseball team, and you know what your on-base percentage is. And let's just suppose that your on-base percentage is a 400. That means that for every appearance at the plate, the probability of you getting on-base is going to be equal to 0 0.4. And then the only other option is the probability of not getting on-base is going to be 1 minus P, which will be 0 0.6. Okay, now let's suppose that you've um, or you're in a game, not much, uh, not much pinching there. So you you have a lot of appearances at the at the plate. Let's suppose you're at a game that you have five appearances, and let's define the random variable as the number of times you can get on base during that game. You have five at bats, and x is going to be the number of times you can get on base at that game. Well, if that's the case, then the random variable can take file and take on six different values. X could be zero, never got on base at all, or, you can, or one, two, three, four, or X can be five, where you got on base at every single appearance at the plate. So let's take this a little step further, and let's ask ourselves, what is the probability that in a given game where you've actually had five at-bats or five appearances at the plate, that you actually got on base three times. In terms of random variables, we are actually asking ourselves, what is the probability that x is equal to three? And this actually denotes our lowercase x. Well, that's going to be equal to the probability of you getting on base three times. And each of these events are independent. So that'll be one, that'll be 0.4 times 0.4 times 0.4 or 0.4 cubed times the probability that you did not get on base the other two times. Because remember, if x is equal to 3, you got on base three times, and the other two times you did not get on base. That, of course, will be 0.6 times 0.6. And then also on these be multiply by the number of ways that can actually happen, and there happen to be 10. Two of the ways happens to be on base, on base, on base, not on base, not on base, or O, O, N, N, O, I kind of confused myself for a second, and so forth. And if you actually go through this, you will find out that there are 10 ways. And that's the exact, and that is also equal to the number of ways that you can draw three distinct objects from a collection of five. So as it turns out, the probability of you getting on base three times, x being equal to three, is going to be 10 times 0.4 cubed times 0.6 squared, which is equal to 0.2304. What we have done is worked with a binomial random variable. Binomial random variables and their associated distributions are used for experiments when, where there are one or more trials. We call them repeated trials. And each trial, that's the mistake I was looking for, each trial, each trial has exactly two outcomes, a success or a failure. They don't have to be success or failure. They just have to be two specific outcomes. If each trial has more than two outcomes, this cannot follow a binomial random variable or a binomial distribution. 
And of course, we are interested in computing the probability that x is equal to a particular number. Sometimes we're interested in computing the probability that x might be greater than a particular number. But the point of the matter here is that x equals x. This is the number of successes. OK, and as we've, mentioned, as we've seen before in our example, suppose that we have n repeated trials with exactly two outcomes, like our on-base percentage problem. Suppose that the probability of success is p. If that's the case, then the probability of the other event has to be 1 minus p. We tend to call that failure. And let's let the binomial random variable x be equal to the number of successes. And that's the case. And the probability that x is equal to a particular outcome of x is going to be n c x, or n take x, where n is once again the number of trials, uh, times the probability of success raised to the x power times the probability of no success for all the other occasions, n minus x. Now we do have a rounding rule for this, and here it is, the same thing we've seen before. It happens to be um, we want to round to four decimal places. So what we want to do is you want to look at the fifth decimal place. If it's five or higher, we round up. If it is not, then we don't need to round up. Okay, so let's go back to our baseball example. Now we did it for the case where um, x was equal to 3, let's do it for the case when x is equal to 2. If that's the case, then the probability of x being equal to 2 is going to be the probability that you actually got on base twice, that would be 0 0.4 squared, that you did not get on base the other three times, times the number of ways that you can do that, and that's the same as, as taking two um, objects out of, two distinct objects out of a collection of five when order doesn't matter. And if you computed that, that is what you would get. You get 0.3456. And let's go on, and, and let's go ahead and work a couple of examples. Here we have rolling a die. So we're going to define success as rolling a 3. The probability of that occurring is going to be 1, 6. Therefore, failure is going to be any other number. And the probability of that occurring is going to be 1 minus p or 5, 6. Let's suppose that we have 10 repeated trials. Then the event x being equal to 6 is the event of rolling exactly 6 threes and 10 tries. What is that going to look like? Well, here it is. It is going to be the probability of rolling one-third six times, that's one-sixth to the sixth power, getting something other than one-third for the other four times, so I'll be five-sixths to the fourth, times the number of ways that can actually happen, and that will be equal to 0 0.0022. Now, as I mentioned before, there is a way that you can do this using your calculator, and let me show you how you can do that. Okay, so here's our calculator. I should have cleared it. Let me go ahead and do that now. I'll probably make it a little bigger. Clear some more. Wait, I need to get down. I need to get down my history first. There, now I can clear it. So the way you can do this is by going into distribution. And if you go into distribution, it knows how it's blue. So we want to hit the blue button second, distribution, and we want to go down. Or in this case, it might be easier to go up to this number, this thing right here. This is this is binome PDF. Okay, binome PDF will, pro will produce for you, will compute for you, the probability that x is equal to x. The random variable x is equal to a particular outcome x. Okay, so all you need to do is click on that, and it will require three quantities. The first one is the number of trials, which in this case is 10. Okay, the probability of success, well, that's going to be 1 6. 1 divided by 6, that's all you need to do. And then the x value, well, that is x is equal to 6. That is our x value, x is equal to 6. OK, hit Enter. You get the paste. That will paste that into um, your screen here. Hit Enter one more time. And this is our answer. Notice we have 0 0.00217. My fifth decimal place is a 7. So we're going to round up. And that will give us this value right here. So let's move on to our next example. So once again, we're repeating the trial 10 times. The success is rolling a 3. And we want to know what the probability of 3 successes is. Well, here's how you can do it. Um, here's how you can actually do it by hand. So it's going to be 10 take 3, or 10 C3, 
times 1 6 raised to the third power, those three successes, and the rest are failures, so it's going to be 5 6 raised to the seventh power. And if you did that math, you would get 0 0.15504, which would round down to 0 0.1550. Once again, you can also use your calculator to do this. Now, we could go through and use the whole binomial PDF thing, but we could also, since this is already in our history, we could actually just go highlight this and hit enter. It brings it down. And notice that the only thing that has changed, 10 is still the same, P is still 1, 6. The only thing that has changed is now X is equal to 3. So we can change that to a 3, hit enter, and look, we get the exact same thing rounded to the exact same value. So just remember, if you want to do this using your calculator, it is binomial PDF or binom PDF. Okay, moving on. We're now down to the coin toss example. What is the probability of getting exactly six heads and 10 causes? tosses? Okay, we have uh, 10 trials. Each trial has exactly two outcomes, heads or tails. We wanted to get six heads. That tells us that we're looking for the random variable x being equal to six. And since it's a fair coin, or we're going to assume that's a fair coin, the probability of getting a heads is 0.5. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Well, if we, wanted to, uh, if we needed to write that out, we would have that the probability of x being equal to six is going to be equal to 10c6 one half to the sixth power times one half half to the fourth power. Using our calculator, we can go ahead and use our history again. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go through distribution just so you guys can get a better feel for how it works. That's second V at VARS, binomial PDF, hit enter. Okay, 10 trials, cool. Uh, now the probability of success is one half. 0.5 would work. X is still equal to 6. Paste. And there we go. We have 0 0.20507. Notice that my fifth decimal place is higher, is 5 or higher. So this will round to 0 0.2051. And now let's go to the dreaded test taking, taking strategies. Now a student takes an exam containing 16 true or false questions and he does probably what I never want any of you guys to do. He just randomly guesses. Actually, I had a couple of students that did that to me. And the question here is, what is the probability that he will get exactly two questions right? Well, remember, since he's guessing, the probability of, a, of, of him guessing one correctly is going to be one half. It's basically like the flip of a coin. All right. Um, we have 16 trials, and we're looking for the probability that x is equal to 2. So the probability that x is equal to 2 is going to be equal to 16 c2 times 1 half squared times 1 half 16 minus 2, or to the 14th power. Once again, using our calculator, let's just go ahead and use our history this time. Highlight binomial PDF, hit enter. We need to change n to 16. So I'll just change the 0 to, uh, 0 to a 6. P is still 1 half, x is now 2, hit enter. And that is your answer, you will have 0 0.00183 and of course that will round to 0 0.0018 now this example is designed to remind you that a binomial distribution can only have two outcomes per trial either success or failure or we want to be more general, outcome one or outcome two. Okay, so here we want to determine whether or not the given procedure results in a binomial distribution, and, identify, and then if not, identify which condition is not met. Okay, well, we're going to survey 40 people 
to determine which brand of soft drink is their favorite. Now, are there just two demands, uh, brands of soft drink? No, there's Coke, there's Pepsi, there's Sprite, there's Sierra Mist, there's Cheerwine, that's my daughter's favorite. There's many, many outcomes, there are not just two. So this will not follow monomial. And why? Because there are more than two outcomes per trial. And that is all I have for this video. Please stay tuned for a follow-on video when we will talk about scenarios where we need to compute the that where we need to compute the, that the probability of x is either greater than a particular number or when it is less than a particular number. And I will show you how technology can serve you well in that particular case as well. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. This is Bob Boyle, signing off.